Good afternoon. It's Monday. It's three o'clock. I'm out in my back garden. Um, it's a bank holiday Monday and it's really beautiful sunny weather. So it's a really lovely day to be out in the garden. Lovely day to be out enjoying this beautiful weather. And lovely day to try to start doing a veg patch. So I'm going to um, build a no dig veg, veg patch in my back garden. I've got um, a bit of garden that I think you might have seen before that um, is just sort of a bit of a empty space currently but it's south facing it's got the sun looking down on it so it's got a nice um, bit of space here um, and I have been growing some vegetables in little pots in our potting shed for the last few weeks probably about five or six weeks that they've been growing from seed so I've got things that I can plant out so I thought I'd have a go at doing a no dig veg bed I don't think anybody else has done that on the lives yet before um, so I'm going to just show you the seedlings that I've grown so here I've got the courgettes some really nice little courgette plants some little pumpkin plants some runner beans some french beans I've got some really tiny little tomato plants that I won't plant out quite yet. I'll wait for them to come on a bit and then I'll plant them out. I've got some snap peas as well. So here is the patch that I'm going to develop. We've got a vine at the back, which obviously I'll leave. The aim of that one is that it was going to trail up over the decking, but it hasn't really grown that much to do that. Got a really nice raspberry plant here at the back that's got some lovely raspberries growing on it as you can see and then the rest is really sort of dry mixture of weeds and grass um, and this bit of empty patch that we've had potatoes growing in we've had onions we've had leeks other sorts of things um, so that's been growing over the last few years more as a raised bed so excitingly we're going to turn this bit into a bit of a veg patch well. So I'll just hand over to Eleanor to be my camera person. So what I'm going to do is obviously block out the sun to these weeds because the more that these weeds and the grass grows then obviously that's going to interrupt the growing of the vegetables. So I'm going to put some cardboard down will prevent the light getting onto that bit of grass and weeds. So this is a really good time because we've got lots of cardboard, I don't know about you, but we've had lots of deliveries over the last few weeks. So there's plenty of cardboard at the moment, so that's a nice free resource. So I've just flattened it out. And actually, since I last did this, cardboard seems to have much less sellotape on it um, and they seem to be using this sort of paper tape so you don't even have to worry mm. about peeling off the sellotape. When I made one of these last time, there was all the cardboard boxes had loads of sellotape so you have to spend ages peeling off the cardboard, the, sorry, the tape off the cardboard. So the first step to do, it's a bit odd but it's best to walk to the cardboard because then it'll It will stay down, it won't flap up with the wind and also you want the cardboard to start to break down a bit so that the roots of these lovely vegetables will grow through down into the ground. So it's obviously much easier to do this than it would have been to dig it all up manually with a fork. Mm. That would have been quite a big job because I don't know about where you are but it's not rained here probably for about three or four weeks mm. so the ground's very very dry very hard and we've got London clay soil so it's actually very hard and um, not actually that nutritious for the plants so it's mm. better to use our compost as a mulch and basically. all that cardboard adds to the structure doesn't it of the soil it helps as well doesn't it yeah it's another part of mm. another nutrient at all be part of the compost for the plant. Actually you 
can already feel the, comp the castle breaking down. It's this interesting corrugated structure, so there's already some air in there, and it's good to have air because then that gives space for the little mm. creatures, particularly the worms you want to encourage to come and break it all down and break up the soil. We've got Tracy Brownlow watching Hello, and Georgina Tracy. Cox. So I don't know if you've done No Dig Tracy. Um, we've done it a couple of times with varying degrees of success. It's very unconventional, not really what we've done at Growing Together, is it? But it's something we can have a try at. Mm -hmm. Try different things and different people enjoy gardening in different ways and that's the great thing about gardening, that diversity of having a go. Mm. And Georgina says, hi Matt, what a great day to garden. It's a beautiful day to garden, particularly on a bank holiday Monday, really great day to be out. Really lifts the mood, lifts the um, mental health and well-being. Obviously it was Mental Health Awareness Week last week and it's really important that we think about our mental health and our well-being and particularly at this time while we're still in isolation, still not back to normal, we can get out in our gardens or into parks and open spaces and have a go. Hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be able to get back to growing together in the next few weeks and people can start having a go there too. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to come and look at the compost that I dug up? Mm. Um, Gareth's watching and says, afternoon Matt. Hello, good afternoon Gareth. Right, would you like to actually look closely? Yeah, the... so I thought you could look closely at the compost. So this is compost from my back garden. Um, we've got one of those Daleks, I might take you down there and show mm. you later. Um, that we basically put any organic matter in. So as you can see here, we've got bits of old leaves. Mm. Um, lots of eggshell, we put our eggs in it and that breaks it up. We've got, um, this is wood um, mm. from the wood burning stove, ash, so it's got potassium in it. Actually, when I dug it up about half an hour ago, there were loads of worms. So you can mm. see these lovely um, Amazing, aren't they? composting worms. So it actually was really... Oh, someone's put a heart for your compost. Rich and biodiverse compost. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been putting a heart for the compost. It's lovely, isn't it? It's so amazing. Such and lovely to think, worms. And to think that it's just made from waste, really, isn't it? From kitchen waste and garden waste and become something so nutritious. It's so lovely. Yeah, so obviously I'm not a particularly technical gardener, but... What I do do is put all the um, green waste into my compost heap and also have bits of newspaper, bits of paper. So you need a bit of brown, a bit of dry, which is your paper, your newspaper, some leaves and then more of the green stuff. So I put all the um, garden clippings in and I also put in all of the garden waste, all of the peelings. When I dug up um, out of our compost heap, I did find... You'll be interested to hear this, Eleanor. Mm. Um, one of our potato peelers was in with the compost. Oh, that's funny. That's where <laughs> so it that's went. So that's where then. it went. Um, I also found a trowel that had been in yeah. there for quite a oh, while. Goodness. Also found things that don't compost down. So mm. little bits of this sort of plastic that's oh. off boxes and card that we put in. Um, you have to pick it out again. Then, so you have to you? kind of pick them out. Although. Mm. As I say, I'm not a particularly technical gardener, so to me it doesn't really matter that much, but you obviously ideally don't want lots of non-organic matter in. But the worms are amazing at just breaking up the soil, breaking up the mm. compost. Didn't you find a slow worm in there once years ago? Yeah, we've had slow worms mm. here. I know that certainly growing together we've had slow worms as well. Mm. It's yes. a plastic you don't want. Mm. Yeah. But slow worms are the best. Mm. Um, we have had mice on the compost heap, which I don't mind too much when they're down the bottom of the garden. don't particularly want them in the house. Um, bits of twigs and that sort of thing. I think people are quite scared of compost quite often because they think it smells and they think it's all mm. rotty and disgusting. But actually when it's rotting down, it actually smells quite a sweet smell. It's quite a nice smell really. Um, and just really nutritious and good for the soil and good for the environment, obviously, to be recycling and reusing a lot of this stuff. So I'm literally going to tip some of this onto my new raised bed. Well, it's not even a raised bed, my no-dig no garden bed. I'm going to have to move the seedlings out of the way. Hmm. 
So really, ideally, you're getting about an eight, uh, an inch, or three centimetres thick of compost, or form like a mulch layer on the top, mm -hmm. and that will kind of break down over time. You don't want anything that's too much like live roots, because that might just grow a new weed. Yes. And you can see that you've got so many worms working hard to break that up. Um, mm. Aren't they a great resource? I think the robin's probably going to come out and enjoy this too in a minute. And the nice thing is with it being compost just from the Dalit thing, there's so much of it, isn't there? I mean, it's just there and it's free without having to transport it or buy it or anything. It just keeps coming. We mm. keep producing waste for our compost heap. Probably every couple of days we have to empty our bucket from our kitchen into the compost heap. And whenever I cut the what grass there is, or veg cuttings or hedge clippings and that sort of thing. Actually this is the compost that I bought from the shop um, that was already in the wheelbarrow. Mm. You can compare that. You can see the difference can't you? Yeah, obviously this is dry but it's mm. also um, much less varied in its nutrients mm. and I think the key thing about the no dig is the st soil structure. You don't want to keep digging up the soil structure and letting all the carbon out you want to kind of lock the carbon in lock the nutrients in the soil mm. and Gareth says I'm impressed thanks Gareth I'm impressed by all your wonderful creative um, things that you've been doing on your lives I can't live up to those but I can do a bit of in a few weeks time you can come back and see how everything's growing, maybe I'll even cook something from the courgettes and pumpkins that will grow later in the year. Mm. You can fun. cook with the courgette flowers as well, can't you? Yeah. Which would be really nice to do. I did want to show you the tea bag. Um, oh here yes. it is. Maybe before, maybe from a packet that wasn't the plastic free, do you think? Yeah, because so I think now that we was, get plastic free. That was quite a posh tea bag, one of those Earl Grey or something mm -hmm. that um, is basically from plastic. So. When plastic became the public enemy last year or so, a lot of tea bags are now plastic free, but they're not all plastic free. And it's amazing that we always put our tea bags in our compost heap along with the eggshells and the coffee grounds and everything else. Most of them have gone. When you think how many yeah. tea bags we get through, yeah, a lot in our house. <laughs> Loads. every day, you know, over a week and over a month, and most of them have gone, haven't they? They've just turned into this lovely compost, but you can tell when it's some of those more plasticky ones. Yeah. yeah, it is one of those posh ones, isn't it? And they say it's silk, but it completely isn't, yeah, is it? It's really plastic. Is, it's really just plastic. Mm, cause if it was actual silk, then it would, um, would break down, wouldn't it? Because it's organic. So we've got a real diversity of stuff in here. Mm. Really good for the plants, and particularly courgettes and pumpkins, because they like really rich... Um, really rich compost feed off if they're hungry and I think I'll need to keep topping up around and keep feeding it but if you feed it with this organic mulch from your compost heap then that's going to be the, obviously the cheapest but also the best way of doing it. It's looking really good and it is thick isn't it that wheelbarrow is given a really lovely thick layer. Yeah. More than an inch thick, probably, yeah. isn't it? An inch off, mm. two inches. So I don't know if the, I've got quite a lot of foxes and rats in <laughs> yes. our garden. They'll, They'll think we've done it for them, it, won't probably, they? But we just need mm. to keep an eye on it. I did earlier in the year when I had that put quite a lot of Worcestery spikes round, and that actually did stop them mm. digging. So I'll probably do something here too to prevent them from digging. Julie Lindsay says hi. Hello Julie, nice to see you. How's everybody doing? How are they enjoying their bank holiday? We haven't been down the beach today because I think it's a bit busy. Um, but we did go to the Westcliff beach the day before yesterday mm. and that was actually really quite quiet so don't believe absolutely everything you see in the 
WordPress and on social media. So what I'm going to do is plant out, and Tracy can advise if she's still on. I think now is a good time to plant out courgettes and pumpkins. Um, mm. The plants are looking quite, um, they're doing really well, aren't they? I'm just trying to sort of show you the... Yeah, so this is the pumpkin, it's the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. So when it first comes up, it's just got a couple of these sort of flatter leaves. And then the next day, these more pumpkin-y leaves. I don't know what the technical term is. So I think by the time it's got these bigger, more pumpkin -y leaves, then they're okay to plant out. I have, as I said, I grow it in my potting shed, but um, probably the last week or so I've been taking it out during the day. And the reason for that is to make it a bit more hardy and resilient, particularly to movement. So it was very windy mm -hmm. on Saturday, wasn't it? So I thought it'd be good to, um, for it to experience the wind before it's planted out there, because if they're just in a... Um, yeah, in a potting shed or in a greenhouse or on a windowsill that doesn't ever get that movement then they're not going to be very hardy or resilient. Obviously mm -hmm. the weather keeps changing and a couple of weeks ago it was actually really frosty wasn't it in the night time even though it was May. So you kind of need to think quite carefully about when and what you plant out. And similarly these are the courgettes and these are actually doing even better. Mm. That one's got four leaves on, uh, yeah. um, so that's really ready to go out, and that's that one similarly. So I'll plant out a couple of courgettes and a couple of um, pumpkins. I do know from previous experience that they really spread one year, probably about ten years ago when oh. we were here, they spread right across the garden and we had these most amazing massive we had two huge ones, didn't pumpkin we? boards. We had oh. some amazing courgettes as well one year, um, so it really does, um, we've had some years where it's been quite successful and some years where we haven't really managed to grow much but hopefully this year and particularly because I'm around more I'll have a bit of um, an opportunity to keep a check on things. So I think I'll do the courgette slightly further up and then the pumpkins at the mm. front so that they can kind of sprawl across mm. if they succeed, if they do well. So you can see the beautiful roots here that have grown in the root system. So I think that means also it's ready to come out because otherwise it gets root bound. A bit like my spider plant. Um, if you watched that several weeks ago, so I'm going to be really careful to teasing out the roots, trying not to tear them. Oh, yeah, Julie says oh, too many on the beach today, sadly. Oh so yeah, been particularly that there. sort of south end end. Mm. It's very um, busy on the beach, but. Maybe you can go in the evening, Judy, when it's quiet and down, because everybody will come in the daytime and then they'll go away again in the evening. So that's one of the courgettes. I think the West Cliff end or Chalk end, or maybe down at South Church, might be a bit less busy. But if you go down the um, sort of South End bit by the pier, then that's going to be the busiest. Now Tracy always says to plant things in three because of the um, aesthetic design quality mm. of threes. So I think I'll follow Tracy's advice here and plant a third courgette out. And then I'll give some of these plants, maybe I'll plant one or two into pots and then give some away as well. Um, mm. and you can see how everybody does. Don't want too many courgettes because we won't get through them. I do like a courgette cake, so I think we can probably um, do that later in the year. So here I've got my pumpkins. These are done pretty well. And even our youngest says he likes courgettes now, doesn't yeah. he? He it's a vegetable, which is yeah. good. There's another really good um, roots network on the bottom of my pumpkin plant. Yeah. That's done well. Three of these as well. Plant them at the front. Oh, Julie says, How dare you, I'm posh. 
It was short pro peach. Of course, Julie, of course. <laughs> why, why not? Absolutely. Go down, go down chalk pro beach. That's, mm. yeah, I think keep it away from... It does get busy again though, doesn't it, at chalk yeah, ends? Yeah, it gets very busy. Maybe mm. come up to Westcliff, Julie. Mm. It might actually, you might surprise yourself. It's not too bad there. <laughs> we sometimes have to stop and turn around, haven't we, on the... Yeah, um, like it gets the quite narrow because gets... they've widened the mm. bit at Westcliff um, where they've got the road that's used to be parking that's now you can walk on and then um yeah when you get down to chalkwell by the new very posh flats which i assume you don't live in those julie um then um yeah it gets very very narrow and very busy and i think because also, also all the bits along the cinder path has been shut mm. i don't know if it still is but that obviously means all the people in that bit of lee they go down to the chalk over to the beach too, so it's um, quite difficult. So here we are, just going to plant up the third pumpkin plant. So that was easy, wasn't it? That was easier than digging a whole load of... Um, yeah, pan round. It does look good, doesn't it? Well, that's kind of like really your really instant nice. veg bed, isn't it? Lovely, isn't it? Once I've got these tomatoes slightly bigger, I'll probably put a row of tomatoes either side. And then also I've got these um, these are runner beans and I've got some French beans and I'll put them at the back with a wigwam because um, I think that will be a really nice I'll have to do some more compost harvesting at some point and obviously that won't block the light out the sun because the sun's coming from the south um, beautiful sun today so, and I think you kept some sticks from the Budlier, did you, which would be fine for the wigwam thing? Yeah, we've got sticks that we've, yeah, we've got lots of different sticks that we can use, mm. we just use the um, Budlier that we cut back every year, the sticks, we have actually got, next door I've got, um, bamboo, bamboo, that's yeah. what I was looking for, actually one of them started coming up in our garden as well. Um, so we can have some homegrown bamboo too. So this is a very dry soil. It's had a lot of pops from us over the years. It's also had a lot of ash from our wood burning stoves in it. Um, but what I'll do later, when I'm not on a live, is top it up with a bit of organic compost from our mm -hmm. Dalek composts. Because we've still got quite a lot of that. Um, I'll sort of spread it out, mm -hmm. then I can put my three. Uh, and I think when we've looked at an old was it an old plan of the house, there was some sort of pond hill. There should have been, there was something concrete, wasn't there? Yeah, when I dug it up actually mm. one time, there was, there were like, there's like a big square here um, that was a pond. Mm. So, so it's not like the soil that. is as deep as it might be, I think. But, you know, over the years we've added a lot more organic material, haven't we? Yeah. So I've got three there. Um, I have to work out whether I can fit in the French beans as well. We do like French beans because they're very good to eat. Mm -hmm. Very easy to eat. Once you plant... It's looking great, isn't it? The best thing to do is do some watering. I'm going to do it quite carefully so that all the compost doesn't just run off. Oh, Fiona's watching, that's nice. Hello, Fiona. I don't hello. know I can compete with Fiona's Aww. amazing gardening, but um, having a go. So just water them in. I think these already perk up now that they're in the soil. And they're recently back. Those worms that you saw be delving down and up and pulling all the nutrients out of the soil. And that's the great thing about the no dig, is that then it really starts to interact with the soil beneath it. You never quite know what these plants are going to do because they're living things. They will keep interacting with the soil and the way that you treat them and also the weather. If I sort of mound them up as well, that's the other thing that you can do with pumpkins and courgettes in particular is kind of plant them on the mound. I do have a mound down where I've um, cleared the compost heap. I was thinking of 
planting a courgette or two down there and seeing how that goes on the mounds of compost that I've already got down there. I think that will grow pretty well because that also gets a lot of sun. Um. Oh, Julie says my parsnip, cabbage and raspberry seeds are sprouting. Wow! That's good isn't it? Oh send us a picture Julie, we'd love to see that. Trouble, isn't it? I'll end up getting so muddy when I'm gardening. <laughs> Water there. Yeah. Beans in. Yeah, so I'll put the wig where I'm up and tie these to them carefully as they grow. Um, I'll leave this little path here so that I can get round. I might edge it with some bricks just to delineate it. But, um, that's quite a transformation in not that much time, mm. not that much work really. The hardest work was digging the compost out of the yes. compost heap, which is always quite hard work. But it's good exercise, good to be outdoors. To show you our potatoes um, while we're here. So this year I've planted potatoes in pots because when you leave them in the ground, what I tend to do is leave little potatoes and then they keep growing more and more and kind of continue to break up and almost take over the um, ground. So I've planted them in pots. We did have a couple of spare of these um, paper recycling boxes that I think Council <laughs> kindly gives out from time to time. Mm. And rather than bin them, I've drilled holes in the bottom of them and planted potatoes in them so these were didn't they they were giving out potato planters did they no. and similarly a food waste box we always only have one small food waste box each week so mm. there's a spare big one that blue one there. Um, wasn't being used for anything so again i've drilled some holes in the bottom yeah. of it and we are reusing it for food yeah. waste because that's what the compost <laughs> is and the paper waste because that's the in the compost as well um yeah so i'll harvest them later in the year and we've obviously got our apple trees that I showed you previously in terms of the mm. apple structure. I've worked quite hard on them over the last week or so because they were getting a bit of powdery mildew on the ends. So I did ask Tracy, as my go-to gardening expert, what to do. She said probably the apple tree is a little bit distressed, so I um, cut all the grass from underneath it, cut off all those ends. And I've been watering them every day because it's been so dry. Really looking really much better now, aren't they? They're yeah, looking quite look. healthy and happy now, aren't so they? So brilliant, it's really, really perked up. So they don't really like having grass underneath them, do they? Too much apple yeah. trees. And then should we go down and look at the compost mm. heap just to show you where the compost came from? And then we'll finish. Oh, Julie says she'll send you some pictures. Oh, She's lovely. turned her garden into a vegetable plot. Brilliant. So I think that's what a lot of people are doing this year. So this is the compost heap. This is the Dalek. I think that was issued from the council as well at some point mm -hmm. um, to put all our grass cuttings in. So we kind of pulled this up and pulled it, pulled mm -hmm. it forward. And here you can see a huge amount more compost. There's so much there, isn't there? It's lovely. Lots of eggshells, lots of... Um, paper waste, lots of leaves. And we've got two spare Daleks as well, haven't we, which is quite good because then if one's full up, in. then it can um, carry on composting and sitting in there, can't it, while you fill up the other one. They tend to all be quite full until I get around to harvesting yes. them. Um, as I say, I think I might plant a courgette on there and see how that goes. This year. I think mm. I've got all the sun here as well, mm. it's got a nice bit of sun. We've, in the middle of the garden we've got shade from all the trees but this bit at the bottom of the garden we've got our vine here which is doing well quite established mm, looking beautiful isn't it giving us lots of grapes and this is a green gauge let's see if i can get that in the picture green gauge tree mm. and we've got our raspberries here which are coming coming out really well mm, that's going to be nice isn't it i think we have raspberries and loganberries didn't we so yeah. probably both Black and then black currants here. That's a good shot of them. Mm, very nice. They're going to be lovely, aren't they? 
So I think the compost the heaps being amongst the raspberries and the black currants, I think that really helps to feed the plants because obviously all that goes with the mycorrhizal, the fungi that kind of transmits the um, nutrients. nutrients from mm. the plants to the soil to the other trees and the other plants. So thank you for joining me today. I look forward to showing you um, how that's growing in the next few weeks. I hope you're all well, hope you're staying safe and looking after yourselves and I'll see you soon.